Right, so it's first service day for the little boat. We've done our, I think we've done about 18 hours now. So you've got to do the service between, I think it's like 17 and 20 hours. Um, but we need the service, don't we? So we're back here with Paul, with the outboard marine. So he's going to do the first service. I bet you it feels like you only fitted this last week. It does. It really does. Because it was only last week. <laughs> so the oil's now coming out. I didn't actually know it came out of that hole. That's cool, isn't it? And if you look how it's designed, it doesn't run down the casing. It'll just come straight out. It goes down there. Good design. Slowly in. This is the Albert Dock in Liverpool and this was Surinder's home for many, many years. Rep on board, wasn't yeah. it? Take them out for a little spin. Which, which we had three, three big blokes. I'm going to say on the boat, and it just all went well, right? Yeah. So we are in Liverpool Marina at the moment. So we're just about to put the boat back onto the trailer. So 
so because the, the, the Liverpool docks are all salt water, um, obviously every time the boat comes back in we give it a really good wash and what you need to do is clean the inside of the engine out, don't you? How you do that, you give it a good run in fresh water. So here's my little test tank. It's just that big, it takes a while to fill. There is actually a port on the side of the engine which you can actually put um, a hose pipe straight into, but I like to actually simulate it running with fresh water going through it. Even though I think if you were more, if you were like a mooring or something, you could just give it a quick, a quick hose through like that. But I like to give it a good run. Right, so we just had our first engine service and a little test. And a little test. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, that was cool. Because it's basically, well, they're like little canals, aren't they? The docks. The docks, Liverpool docks. Liverpool docks, it's so, got so much history. I was going through there, imagine all these big old boats going in there and offloading the cargo in Liverpool. Beautiful scenery. Right, so we've got a week to go until the fishing competition. Ooh. And we've still got a few things to do to the boat. Yeah, so we need to get ready, don't we? Yeah, so we need to go and fit a deck wash. Yes. So the first thing you need when you're doing a, a sort of a water system maybe is somehow to get water into the boats. So for this instance it's for the deck wash. So we're going to be putting a through hole. It's got a nice little grate on it to stop the little bits of seaweed getting in. Then we've got a, a isolation valve. So we've got a nice 316 stainless steel. This is bronze this. Very posh. So the only real place we could actually fit it is down here, up high. So this is underneath this cupboard. So I think eventually the, the, the pump's gonna go here, because it's a bit dead space down there, isn't it? So we can have it up high, but we've got to think about, can we operate the valve? So it's hard to fill, but eventually that's gonna be up there. Obviously it'll be, the bottom bit be on the other side of the hole, and we can get to the isolation valve. So first job is to pull a little pilot hole through and then Gemma's gonna have a look on the outside to see where the hole comes out. I think, I think it's good, I think it's good. Because what, what, what we've also had to do is allow for the, the rollers on the trailer because we don't want the rollers on the trailer to have to bump over the, um, the through hole fitting, do we? So, right Gem, are you gonna keep an eye on the outside for me to make sure I'm drilling in the correct location? Don't drill in the wrong place. <laughs> Okay, perfect, right in the middle. Beautiful. So yeah, this, this bronze fitting here, it's obviously designed for a boat which is basically this is going to be underwater for like, I don't know, an unknown amount of time, 10 years, it's got a big filter on it. Me and Gemma did have a quick discussion, I was there like, let's take the filter off it, because then we can make it nice and flat and fluid dynamic and it's not really going to affect the boat or turbulence to the transducer. But Gemma's there, well it's there for a reason and we don't want any little fishies getting sucked up in it, do we? So what we're going to do is just sort of compromise, we're going to give it a quick smooth off, try and make it a bit more slippery. There we go, a little bit smoother. Let's give me a little file now and clean up inside the grooves. 
So we've got a polished through hull, we've got a backing plate for it, which is um, marine plywood. We've got the nut, the valve, and then the half inch fitting to then go to the pump. So let me see if I can find a glamorous assistance, because we need someone to hold the back of it while it all gets glued. Really good. So it's going to go from the through hole to a screen to filter out any garbage. It goes to the pressure pump, then it goes to an accumulator, then it goes to a T piece, and from the T piece it goes to another isolator. From this isolator it's going to go to the tap by the sink. And from this side of the tea it's going to go to the deck wash, which is going to give us some lovely high pressure water to clean down the deck. I was just reading on the Seaflow pump. Three gallons a minute. That's quite a lot, though, isn't it? Okay, so now we've got our seacock accumulator and pump. And there's the filter there, quite handy to get hold of. So we need to now wait until we go in the water before we can test it. But obviously, I'll turn the isolator valve off until we're in the water. So then I'll open it up and give it a good test, then, can't we? But hey, that's going to be really, really cool. Looking forward to it. Right, so we've done the deck wash. What I've also done, I've moved the battery, the auxiliary battery forward. So I've put it right at the peak of the front of the boat now, because the boat is very sort of tail heavy, we found. So the more weight we can move forward, the better. And we put some put the switches in. So I've put an additional batch of switches. Turn the power on. So I've put an additional batch of switches in it. The only switch we're running at the moment is the the um, UV lights. I don't know if you can see that, can you? What else have we done? Oh, we've washed it. We have, but I also made a shade for the inside because when we last went out fishing on it, it was really hot. And when you go inside to get some shelter, the sun was still battering down through the skylight. So I made a very, very quick cover. That was quick, wasn't it? Is it temporary? <laughs> well, it's just a piece of insulation with some Velcro on it that then sticks to the carpet. Cool, but a good job. Yeah, that's good there. The Velcro sticks straight to the carpet, brilliant. So we also fitted a Jesus handle. There's a grab handle, that's the other word, isn't it? So we've got one in the middle here. So you can basically hold on there. When I'm driving, I can hold on to the steering wheel, I can hold on to that. Or when Gemma's panicking over here, she's got this handle here to hold on to, and she's got this handle to hold on to. So no excuses now for panicking, is there? Just hold on to the boat, ride the waves. Right, I've got a paint brush roller extension pole. We know you like painting, don't we? What are they for now? <laughs> so, I'm still panicking about... Um... Fishing? <laughs> Yeah, that's my new fishing rod. <laughs> if we are out, I know the British weather never really has many nice days, but if we are out and it is really hot, we could do with some sunshade on the boat. So we're making a very, very quick sun canopy. Is this going to be the most bodgiest thing on the boat? This is the most bodgiest thing on the boat. 
So you've got one there, other way, other way. Cool. Ah, right. I've got two bits of plastic pipe. I can see where you're going with this now. And we've got this 13 quid sheet. <laughs> 13 pounds? Well, you got the right colour anyway, didn't you? So. So what we need to do now is really sh shorten the sheet and obviously the same on the other side when you got your like poppers or pressed up things or something you could like pop through them Yeah Is that going to work? Obviously it's quite a bit there Wouldn't do well on a windy day would it? But... <laughs> And if we run out of fuel, it could be a sailboat. <laughs> yes. If it's a spinnaker or a genoa or whatever they call them. So once we work out how to connect these from fits. Yeah. That'll be perfect. Would you like? Um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, we, we realised we was overthinking our temporary shade which has got to last us two days. So Gemma's just had a good idea. I put that in the book. It's only this big. <laughs> so if we put a bolt in here, it's probably easy to show you then explain. We could just hook that onto there then. And then that'll sort of hold us up. Am I right in saying, Joe? Yeah. So, and then when the other one goes on, it puts tension on it then. And then the poles are just there to keep it out and yeah. it's not actually hooked onto the poles. Awesome. Right, let's go find some bolts. So what do you think then we could just hook it in there? Yeah. Right, let's see how quick and easy it is to assemble. Don't forget I'm like, Jesus, I'll be walking on water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't really do it, because I no. want to see if you can do it on your own from in the boat. <laughs> that is actually like, the perfect size sheet for that job. And if the sun's in front of you there, you've got, it's covered there. I just hope we've got like zero wind. <laughs> <laughs> what, who I lift the boat off? See what you can do as well, is like. Oh yeah. And then it won't clash with your fishing rods and pulling a big fish in. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> So that's ace. It is ace. So we've got two telescopic paint roller handles. We already had one. The other one cost us it's very, oh, uh, 10 quid. Like, it was like 11 pounds. The sheet cost us 13 pounds, so 24 pounds. And we already had the offcuts of white PVC pipe that we used at the front. So that is actually really 24 really quid shelter. That is horrendous. Bimini are us. That looks a bit crap from here. <laughs> so on the paintbrush extenders, they come with like an adapter so you can sort of wedge it up inside a paint roller. But it's got like a big coarse thread on it. So I think, I've obviously I've lost the old one because the old one was a, a an old one I already had and I bought a new one so it came with this. So I think if I cut this in half and then in half again, then I'll give me some nuts then to keep the sheet on top of the extenders. Two high quality nuts. Right, so shall we see how quick and easy it is to take apart? Because if I could make the boat move to simulate being in the water, wouldn't I? But have a beer. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yep, okay. Shove out of the cupboard. Drafty plastic pipes in it as well, and then it's all together, yeah. isn't it? So you saw it here first, didn't you? It is amazing what you can buy at your local hardware store, isn't it? And for like a different purpose. I mean, we did look into a bimini, which was a bit. They fold forward or fold back, but it'd be sort of in the way most of the time, so perfect. Nobody will even know it's there. So the boat is now pretty much ready for this Ian Gillen Classic competition, which is next week. There's just one issue. When we have done a bit of testing on the boat, it's not the stablest thing in the world. So we have one more trick up our sleeve to sort that problem out. So the next video on this fishing boat will be the solution to that problem. So like and subscribe to follow along and we'll see you all soon. Bye for now.